Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Samuel Zinner. Uh, welcome to my desk here in the mountain village of Aula in Tuscany, Italy. Today, I want to talk about a short sci-fi film written and directed by Eli Powers called Holy Moses. Uh, there'll be a link in the description of this video where you can watch it on YouTube. It starts in Northern Ireland in 1963. It's actually being filmed in upstate New York, a pregnant nun, right? And you can guess the name Mary, right? Um, has a dream of a sick cow right? or a, a, a cow in pain or grieving. Right? And it's implied that uh, Mary entered a convent because she became pregnant, probably right in an unwed state. And uh, she's, she enters a confessional and makes a confession, but the priest doesn't answer remains silent in the confessional. Uh, the next scene, right, Mary has this presentiment that something terrible uh, is going to happen. And uh, she walks into a field covered with snow to a cow, right? And it's, again, seems to be in pain or uh, you know, physical or emotional, perhaps grieving. Uh, and the cow vanishes in front of uh, her sight. And here the uh, film switches to the next scene, uh, which is in West Texas, 25 years later in 1989. What's actually filmed in the Mojave Desert in uh, California, um, near Palmdale. Technically, it's it's in a, a town called Lake uh, Los Angeles, but it's in the desert. And um, there is a gas station attendant, there's a convenience store there as well. Across the street are what are called some buttes, some uh, small rocky mountains, which uh, people have seen in hundreds of Hollywood movies. Right? Uh, and the attendant uh, at or the employee at this uh, gas station is named Justice. And uh, as it starts off uh, in this scene, we hear Justice saying, most people say the Lord doesn't speak to them, uh, but I'm under the impression that we ain't shutting up long enough to listen. And uh, the dialogue uh, or the monologue is not quite clear to me, but he says something about um, God's ways with words, right? Uh, and then they're like riddles, like symbols. Right. That's very apropos, right, uh, of a film like this. Uh, suddenly, a uh, grieving a cow or, you know, a cow in emotional or physical distress shows up at the gas station inside the convenience store, right? Um, the police show up, right? And um, the attendant uh, comes outside to greet the uh, sheriff. And the attendant's overalls are covered with blood. Right? So the sheriff probably suspects a murder or a killing, maybe justice has killed someone, right? Uh, but uh, so he pulls his pistol and uh, goes into the convenience store. Of course, then he finds the, the bloody cow and is tagged, right? Uh, with the number 333 or 333, right? Ulster Magdalene Asylum, right? Uh, so we would suspect this was the asylum or, or the monastery or nunnery right, or convent right, that Mary had been at 25 years uh, earlier. Uh, well, so the sheriff sees the bloody cow, uh, puts up, uh, puts his pistol back into the holster, right, and uh, gets some potato chips, um, walks outside and sees Justice across the street, um, staring at something in the bushes, really the sage bushes. Uh, I've been there many times. I grew up in that area, so I've I've actually been on that very spot where Justice is looking. All right. Um, the sheriff goes across the street, arrives where Justice is, and sees a burning. They see a burning bush. Right? It's burning and it's not stopping. It's not being consumed. Right? So the, the sheriff finds a natural explanation. Well, it's just heat, right? And uh, Justice asks if there are any cow farms in the vicinity, 
uh, which would explain the strange appearance of the cow in the convenience store at the gas station. The sheriff uh, says no. And then the sheriff then proceeds to make a phone call in a phone booth outside. Uh, he wants information, right, on, on the Ulster Magdalene um, Asylum, right? Of course, so now the nun's name 25 years previous was named Mary, and now we have a Magdalene Asylum. So now we're probably thinking what Mary uh, Magdalene, right? Anyway, so um, Justice now at this point is really, really excited and he's basically yelling out to the sheriff, the bush, right? It, it's still going, it's still going, right? It's still burning. And um, the, the doctor, a uh, Doc Bob arrives, right? To determine that the cow probably died from stress, right? The number one killer in, in America, he says. And uh, the sheriff asked the doc to, to take a look at Justice. Uh, he's seeing things. And so all three, uh, Doc Bob, the sheriff, and Justice, end up across the street looking at this burning bush. And the doc says, well, it must be some kind of miracle. The sheriff says, no, nah, it's just got to be some kind of heat. And the doctor says, no, nah, there, there's no kind of heat that can do this. Right? Uh, anyway, so the phone booth rings. Uh, the sheriff goes over. Um, it's a call from Ireland. Well, or at least this is what he's told, is that the cow right was from ireland right suddenly three vehicles all black right arrive at uh the the gas station and people <laughs> dressed in hazmat suits with uh fire extinguishers roll out of one of the these black vans um so they go across the street they put out the fire right and then as they're putting out the fire the voice of the nun back in 1963, right, is uh, heard again. I had a feeling that something terrible was going to happen, but I didn't know what it was, right? Uh, so another black car pulls up, Justice sort of intuitively <clears throat> goes up, uh, approaches it, and knocks on the window of the back seat, and uh, the window rolls down automatically, and there's a priest sitting there, and with a Texas accent, right, he says, um, right, my man tells me you got a cow inside, right? Did you kill it? Justice says, no, it, it sort of like came that way, mostly that way. And um, then the priest says, what you saw out there, referring to that burning bush, what you thought you saw was a mistake. That's all. It wasn't meant for you. And then Justice says, how do you know? Right. So the priest says, miracles don't belong to men like you. And then, then uh, <clears throat> the, the black car goes away, departs. <clears throat> it's pointing out here, this is, uh, reminds me of that scene in Dar Darren Aronofsky's movie, Pi, right? Where Max, uh, the eccentric uh, computer scientist, tells this uh, long bearded Hasidic priest, uh, you know, God gave this mathematical code to me, the code that's going to supposedly bring the Messiah in the belief of uh, these Hasidic Jews. But the, 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 the Kohen or the priest uh, tells Max, no, it's not for you. You're not worthy. Uh, but uh, Max says, no, well, then why did, why did God give me this code? And, and you'll have to watch, uh, you know, Pi to uh, understand the story. Right. <clears throat> but in any case, uh, at this point, Jay walks across the street, gazing out into the desert, and uh, says, there's a verse from the good book I like. God chose the foolish to shame the wise. He chose the weak to shame the strong. He chose all the lowly and despised things of the world and the things that ain't just so he could nullify the things that is, unquote. And then we see a scene of Mary holding her stomach, saying, my son, my beautiful son, and as she says this, then we're shown justice standing there, sort of an implication possibly that justice is her son. Now, but uh, how uh, the cow fits into all of that? Well, who, who knows, right? Uh, things are left open-ended, of course, and ambiguous in the film for various reasons, just so it will be an excellent uh, short film, but also, right, open-ended, so it leaves uh, space and possibilities for a possible full-length movie, which I really, really would like to see. 
Uh, anyway, online uh, at directorsnotes.com, I'll have a link uh, below, right? We read uh, about this film that it's a bizarre metaphysical, uh, about a bizarre metaphysical connection, right? Which resonates across time and space, starring Amanda uh, Seyfried and Philip Edinger. It says, Powers absurdist short questions the role extraordinary events play in the lives of the normal people who are rarely the architects of significant stories. Uh, so I, I hope you go in, uh, to the description below, find the link and watch this film. Um, I like it just for what it is, but of course also because it's uh, the second scene, at least is filmed uh, at a place where, where I used to visit many times throughout my youth uh, and you know, up until recent years. Um, and whenever I, I visit America, of course, uh, I'll go to that specific uh, area, a specific area by the by these Saddleback Buttes, the, the name of them, actually, that you see in the second scene of the film. Right. In the 1970s, early 1980s, well, well that was the heyday right, of strange things, all sorts of uh, UFO stories from the local inhabitants, Bigfoot sightings uh, on the Saddleback Butte, um, you know, is, is a very interesting place. Many uh, atomic scientists uh, had retired uh, to that general area, just, you know, within 10 miles, right, of the, of the, uh, of the scene uh, there in um, Lake Los Angeles. And so uh, it's actually a very colorful history, right, uh, for that area. But in any case, all right, uh, I'll end there. Uh, and wish you the best. Take care and thank you.